Let's take a look at some information and charts on Tezos for a brave new coin. So Tezos has a 2 billion market cap sandwiched in between a bunch of other junk, still worth less than IOTA, worth less than EOS, Shiba Inu, Monero, was at one point in time a top tenner. Now I don't even think it's a top 40er. And just like EOS, we have to have the conversation about the Tezos Foundation holdings. And at what point are they going to step in and start to, to do something if they should do something? If these projects are truly decentralized, then they will do nothing. But the odds are that, that eventually, you'd hope, at least for EOS especially, that some sort of buyback or something would go on when your treasury is worth more than the actual token. So that's always a consideration. But the last reported holdings of the Tezos Foundation, September 2020, so it's almost been a year, but uh, was around 850 million, maybe higher, maybe lower than that. Now you'd have to check on the most recent quarterly report, but they still have a substantial amount of coin, that's for sure. Tezos has proved a stake. It kind of has done governance probably better than most other chains, so it's got that going for it. It's had some seamless governance changes that sort of occurred and were brought about because of the block size wars with uh, BTC. Necessity is the mother of all invention. So from that respect, they've done quite well. They've had some not so straightforward issues that were voted on and worked out and upgraded on the chain. They also have the slow beginnings of some things. I mean, it's been a few years. You'd expect more vibrant stuff than this. And the uh, Tezos Maximalist will probably point out that there's more stuff, but they've got stable coins, they've got DEXs, they've got interoperability bridges, they have some DAP NFT stuff. You know, it's basically what is everybody else doing that's successful? Let's try to copy it, which is fine. But until people actually migrate or use Tezos, then, um, you know, it's kind of just an empty cathedral sort of situation. Like EOS, Tezos has what they call bakers, block producers, as part of the proof of stake. Each baker has to hold at least 10% in the total being staked as a bond. And if they don't, they have to buy more. It's not listed here in that specific way, but Binance was notorious for being underbonded in that they just kind of didn't buy enough Tezos to get their proper staking rewards. Uh, but anyway, just at the outset, the top three bakers are exchanges, so that's always going to be an issue. Again, foreshadowing warning for ETH. <laughs> be prepared for this. It's already happening with ETH 2.0. It's great that people have access to this stuff on an exchange. It kind of makes it stupid proof, scam proof. I can just you know, you can just bake Tezos on Kraken or Coinbase or wherever. There are variable fees, obviously. Coinbase takes a massive commission at 25% relative to even Kraken, which is a bit criminal. But at least people have access to this stuff. The downside is, of course, the centralized nature of it. If um, these exchanges start using their voting power in a way that goes against the users, then that's an, an issue, obviously. Binance has a history of doing this. Maybe not Coinbase or Kraken specifically. Coinbase has been anti- BTC for a long time. Kraken, not as much. But if I'm going to trust anybody, it's going to be Kraken. You can always pull your Tezos off of these exchanges or out of these custodians if you don't like how they're voting on stuff, if they are voting on stuff, liquid proof of stake, that sort of thing. But it's always important to keep in mind. So we've got 25% of the network being held on exchange staking. And then it looks like between 10 to 15% is just private bakers, as far as sizes are concerned, uh, foundation bakers, and then some mix of independent bakers. So maybe better off than EOS from the perspective of geographical decentralization. But ideally you have 10 to 15 big players involved in some proof of stake network. I don't know, that's just a number that I'm making up, but the more the better, right? The more decentralization, the better. Looks like there's a total of uh, 411 bakers currently. And it looks like their next vote is Granada. I didn't read into this completely. But they will have, uh, they will perpetually have votes like this to change and improve things over time, which is definitely a plus considering how things work on even Ethereum relative to uh, centralization and the cabal involved there. <laughs> if we look at the rewards to delegate your Tezos after inflation is sub 1%. That's probably even less than um, when you include fees, right? If you include commissions in this, even on Kraken, for example, it's just not really positive 
you know, you're better off just lending USDC or something, which all of these proof of stake networks are going to have a problem unless you are a Tezos maximalist and you're looking at this purely analytically, you're saying to yourself, the proof of stake rewards just aren't there unless you're hoping for massive appreciation, price appreciation over time in the token itself. And 78% of the network is staking liquid proof of stake. I've been corrected before, but I still think this is the case. <laughs> if you've got this percentage staking, then um, this kind of says there's not much else to do with the chain. And this is the transaction counts. You can see from basically 2019 to 2021, transaction counts were holding steady at around 40K. They spiked up. My guess is, um, in March, my guess is this has to do with some of those dApps that I listed in the beginning as far as the DEX component or minting of something. At least that probably played a, a role in this. Transaction counts have uh, slowly crept down here since the highs. And average transaction values are extremely low, which tells me most of the transaction counts are likely staking related. If uh, you're seeing very tiny on-chain transaction amounts, that says that the smaller, on average, the smaller uh, transactions are winning over the big ones, right? So most of these are either zero value uh, notionally or just staking related if it's pulling the average transaction values down that low to basically multi-year lows it's not a lot of uh, tezos moving on chain there's something else going on there which isn't necessarily bullish or bearish one way or the other it just says it's not purely just tokens moving around nvt inverse metric of economic utility uh, free fo float 90 day average lots of caveats but it is creeping downward which is uh, bullish and active address is basically at an all-time high, which is bullish in a vacuum. Now, if you say to yourself, most of this is staking related as far as act being active addresses, if you subtract the staking addresses from this, which you'd have to do some analysis on to get, my guess is you're not going to see as rosy of a picture here as you're seeing uh, with addresses sitting around 35,000. And that's also going to pull NVT up considerably, you know, if you remove sort of the on-chain activity that is just uh, collecting interest. If you look at Google Trends for Tezos since 2017, slowly, slowly crept up uh, mid-year, has uh, gotten smashed down again. For a lot of other coins, this is much cleaner in that the highs and lows are crisp, uh, whereas this is more wavering. But it's easier to get bullish when Google Trends are rising. It just says there's more people, retail, or whoever, searching about the coin, looking into the coin, that sort of thing. Flipping gears to technicals, VPVR, yearly pivots, 5,200 EMA in the red and green here. The Finex open interest, RSI, and a pitchfork, which probably breaks all the rules of pitchforks, but I don't care. We'll start there. It um, It's kind of do or die here. If this is an uptrend at all, it's hard because Tezos has had kind of periods of just mega stagnation at prices uh, levels on the USD pair. So this has a subtle uptrend over time and it's kind of in the maximum bound oversold territory needs to bounce if it does bounce your expectation is a return to this midline kind of like 9 to 12 by end of the year q4 would be an all-time high in the usd pair um there's a death cross here it is dangerously close to being below the vpvr levels that it needs to hold dangerously close to breaking this yearly pivot so if it starts to break down, if it starts to break low after low, you know, if it starts to break this low and this low and this low, it's going probably to 50 cents. You know, that's that's where it's headed. Hopefully on the way down, you'd start to see a bullish divergence, which you don't quite see yet. Not a strong one, at least. On lower time frames, everything's got this Adam and Eve quality to it. You can't really see it here, but it kind of says uh, enough's enough with uh, the, the down creep, at least in the moment. But trend metrics aren't really not on your side uh, for any sort of con bullish reversal or continuation here. Ultimately, you want it probably above the R1 yearly pivot, probably above the 200-day moving average. So somewhere around 4 bucks, 4 to 9, 4 to 12 is a fine trade to be sure of, whereas where it sits now, it's definitely in cliffing territory where it looks like it wants to go lower. And if it does, it's got a long way down. Um, the Bifinex Open Interests, has slowly crept down since mid 2020 and it doesn't look like too many people are uh, super excited about longing tezos here here's the daily cloud which also suggests that we've gone down too quickly 
And there are kind of two types of this um, TKC clamp situation. You see them in uh, early 2020 and mid 2020. And the tough thing about Tezos is the trends haven't been super clean. You can see here you have the inverted head and shoulders, the Kumo breakout, and then a trend from January to May. And that just falls off a cliff, right? Music stops, everybody hates everything, boom, sell it all. And now where do we sit? Well, we have this mean reversion potential back to five based on the cloud on the daily. And sometimes these are quick. So this was the March 2020. Very similar. The, the TK lines separate in a big way. They flatten out. And then price starts to regain towards that uh, red line, the Kijun, the mean. Or the alternative is it doesn't regain the mean and just sort of goes sideways for an extended period of time. Either way, it says we're probably going to relax on the, the doom devastation in the near, near term. So upside is probably limited to five from here based on that. Uh, Tezos BTC, <laughs> another reason why BTC maximalism exists, along with the countless other coins that aren't even traded anymore. Very few things can hold any sort of gain against BTC over two years, three years, four years, five years. At the top, Bitfinex open interest, almost 50-50. Long still slightly 2x or less, 1.8x, whatever that is. Shorts right now, but overall OI is extremely low for anybody opening positions on Tezos there. Death cross since mid 2020, below VPVR. You know, <laughs> there's, I just can't look at this in a bullish manner. It's below all the previous lows. It's consolidating below any of the previous consolidations. It's below the 200. There's not even a yearly pivot down here to, to help it out. No bull div, a head and shoulders here that's starting to break down. Um, it just doesn't look good. So until this is back above 11K sats, it's probably just neutral to bearish. 11K is also the 200 day moving average. Uh, I like 11K to 18, 20K. So that's kind of a 2X trade there. So it's probably just an alert and ignore for now. Because when this does break out of the range historically, it's moved quite nicely. So I don't think it's like a forever ignore. I just think uh, it definitely needs a lot of time to figure out what it wants to be when it grows up. Here's the two-day uh, cloud for XTZ BTC. And this is another way to just say just it's time to wait on this one for sure because until September, probably won't have a chance to do anything because that's when the cloud, the resistance sort of burns off. So if this can stay sideways until September, then I like it. Again, into Q4, I like up, but... Until then, it's probably just doing a bunch of nothing. And um, against ETH, Tezos just looks dead. Pushing all-time lows. It basically retraced 80% and then went for 10 more. <laughs> so it's down 90% from the highs. Uh, the cloud told you up in here, this TK cross-recross, that it's bearish below the 200 on the two-day. The yearly pivot is light years away. There is a TKC clamp here, so it may just sideways out on the two-day like it did prior in early 2021 but just like eos the fundamentals for competitors to eth which is what tezos really is it's just a tough ask um, daps devs excitement external support institutional eyeballs interoperability you know all that stuff just isn't on these these coins side that entered the game in 2017 and 2018 and kind of did a bunch of nothing for the past couple of years. So not a lot of rosiness here on the Tezos side of things. Ultimately, there's just too many other competitors, um, both for attention, eyeballs, capital, more exciting, newer things that are probably also going to sell off. But it's going to be tough for things like EOS and Tezos to sort of regain any momentum when there's this much competition other than just even EOS. I still just mentioned the EPTC fund and DeFi portfolio I trade for Techemy Capital on Enzyme.Finance, non-custodial portfolio management tool. You can send Ether USDC into the smart contract. Allows me to use those funds to sort of copy trade on chain. You can see everything transparent, AUM allocation, performance, all the trades I'm making for the amounts through DEXs, deposits, withdrawals. Most of this stuff is in um, Ave USDC at the moment. Just kind of waiting to see how bullish we actually will be in the near term. I was burned once on this range. You can see my trades here, what I was doing. I was burned once, and that's kind of enough for me. So I'm just kind of waiting, 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 waiting for quarterly rollover, waiting for BTC hash rate to stabilize at least. 
but some of this stuff looks bad enough to buy and i've said that on the, the DeFi side of things a few times now so that's all for this one like dislike comment share subscribe and happy trading